Hey, how's everybody? In today's video, we're talking about how do you qualify for long-term care benefits? So we're going to talk about what actually has to happen to you to actually trigger benefits from the private insurance company, or if you're going to use the state's long-term care program sometime down the road, what has to happen before they start paying out benefits to you. Before we get to that, make sure you check the, the description below for a link to a free long-term care guide as well as other resources to help you guys with your financial journey. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like so you don't miss future updates just like this one. So when it comes to qualifying for long-term care benefits, there's a couple of things that need to happen first. First and foremost is something has to happen to you to the point where you can't do a few things of daily living activity. So now the private long-term care market and the state's long-term care program have different definitions of this. So when you're going private, most of these companies are going to say you have to fail to do two of six daily activities. So you can't go to the bathroom on your own, feed yourself, dress yourself, transfer from the house, things of that nature. Fail to do two of six of those and have a doctor sign off on it, that triggers benefits. Another benefit with having a private long-term care policy is cognitive impairments are usually an automatic qualifier. So if you get diagnosed with Alzheimer's, that's automatically going to qualify you to start receiving benefits. Now, with the state's version, they have a list of 10 things that has to happen, and you have to fail to do three of those 10 things. Now, one of the problems with that is cognitive impairments such as Alzheimer's is one of those three things. So getting diagnosed with Alzheimer's does not trigger benefits on the state system. You have to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's and not be able to feed yourself or dress yourself or some combination of their 10 things in order to trigger benefits. Another thing to keep in mind is that in order for benefits to start happening, you have to satisfy the elimination period. So the elimination period is essentially the number of days that you have to wait and pay for care on your own before the company starts paying out their benefits. Now this is in place to make sure that you are true and truly in need of a long-term care benefit and not just some short-term care. So oftentimes most companies use a 90-day elimination period, although some of them will have them shorter and some will go longer. Typically speaking, the longer your elimination period, usually the cheaper the policy is because the company doesn't have to pay out as quickly or maybe not as much. So elimination period is a factor in cost for your long-term care policy. Another thing to note is that some companies are going to require a doctor to annually recertify that you're still disabled and needing the care. So it depends on the policy again, but that's oftentimes one stipulation is that you may have the benefits that trigger coverage initially, but they may want proof that you're still going to be disabled and needing care throughout your need. In some cases, your, your condition may be temporary. You may make a full recovery. So they want to make sure that if that happens, they can stop paying out your benefits. Oftentimes, if they stop paying out benefits, they are going to require you to start paying back money for the policy again to keep it in force if there's anything left. Now, the payments that you receive for your care from private companies are going to come in one of two ways. They either have indemnity policies, which basically means they're just going to give you the money up front and you spend it on the care initially. There's no need to submit receipts or it's on a reimbursement basis. So basically you have to pay out of care yourself, submit the receipts, and then they'll reimburse you. So different long-term care providers are going to have different ways that they pay out. So it's another thing to look for within your policy before purchasing it. Or if you already have it, look through that so you can be prepared of how the benefits work and how they're going to pay out. I hope that video helped you guys out. Remember to like and subscribe, share with a friend, and remember that your future depends on what you do today.